Shut up and sit down. Hello guys, this is Andy from Big Mac's Workshop Painting Studio and it's a pre Airy 2000 Sun Sorcerer today. I am doing this as a test model because uh, I sort of am tempted with um, having a go out with Golden Demon in the new, uh, in the new year. So I'm just having a, a crack at this for a, uh, for a bit of a change as I need to practice on my reds. So we're starting off with German Red Brown through the airbrush uh, which is a, a great shade to start off with uh, when you're working reds. Uh, it gives a nice lot of depth and you can bring it up quite a long way from there. So I've got a good coat on there and I'm working next uh, a sort of a Xenophil sort of style highlight uh, using German Dark Yellow. Uh, this goes over really well and once you put a red on top it just brings out those highlights really really nicely and uh, you don't have to go for a really solid coat either because it's, uh, it's only to um, bring the next layers up uh, in a really really rich way so the next is uh, model layers of red. Uh, again, I'm using an airbrush. As I've always said, anything you do with an airbrush you can do by hand. It's just a bit quicker, uh, and sometimes it's a little bit easier. Uh, so this just saves you a lot of time just uh, doing them glazes. And I'm throwing this on the uh, entire model using a 45 degree angle, what I've uh, already been using for the uh, yellows, and making sure I get plenty of highlights all over the model, just to uh, add the extra richness to the red. So I decided it was a bit too dull for what I wanted so I then went up with um, Model Air's Scarlet Red which is really really vibrant it's very much on the same sort of level as Evil Suns um, which is a GW equivalent and I'm doing that again from probably something along the lines of 75 degrees so it's nearly straight up but not quite and I'm really lifting that uh, top hot spots worth of the red just to really bring it all out. So once I've got that down, I am then going around with um, a uh, black. Uh, any old black is uh, is usable for this. And it's just a black out all the detail and make it give you that nice even start from uh, where, what you're going to work with on the next uh, for the next layers. You get a good qu uh, couple of layers on there just to make it all um, worthwhile. You get a good base, e even base point. And here we are. All blacked out, ready to go. So uh, next is going to be um, Models Air Earth. So Yeah, now it's Models Air Earth. And that's going to be an all of the robe sort of things. Now, I'm not going to lie. At the end of the uh, video, I do, gloss I do skip the... Um, uh, uh, the cloak and everything as I was really unhappy with how it finished I really did not like it uh, so it's something I'm going to have to um, spend a bit of time working on getting them uh, cloaked right so next it is game colour bone now the reason why I added the, uh, terror, uh, the terror from uh, Vallejo is it gives you a good base point from where you're starting with for the, all the bones I do this on the shoulders as well and also on the sort of um, tassel looking things on his, uh, on the front and a, nice, a, a couple of thin layers just to bring it up to the uh, required standard so the next layer is ivory um, I've added a touch of flow aid on this now I've started to get a knack of um, how much to add so it's not drying in about 10, it's not taking an hour or so to dry More, it's more uh, manageable so there's a little bit of uh, ivory on all the highlighted areas uh, especially on the um, shoulder pads as well as they are going to be quite vibrant at the end so I'm adding a touch more of the uh, ivory uh, to the uh, leading edges of the shoulder pads and I do apologise, obviously, with it being in a, such a pale colour on a white background, it is very difficult to see at this stage. I will try and fix the exposure for any upcoming videos, it's just something I'm still going to have to um, practice. So, a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade into the uh, loose of a cloak. This is a, uh, again, really, really thin, and I actually overdo it a little bit, so I have to take some of it off. Um, as I'm not happy uh, with the uh, effect what I'm getting. I also add it to the uh, 
the front uh, of the line cloth. Uh, typically recesses in the shoulders as well just to get a, a good finish all, all the way around. And now it's again back through the airbrush. I'm using t um, Terra Earth, uh, again with the Leo colour. And I'm just throwing it all underneath, just add some depth into the uh, into the cloak. It, it really does help um, uh, with with such light colours to throw a little bit of depth in there. So otherwise you get something that's really, really stark. Now as you can see I'm being ever so gentle with the airbrush as I don't want to go too heavy on the colours um, as that will really really take away from the effects what I'm after. I'm also throwing a touch of the uh, ivory um, through the airbrush as well uh, to the upper edges of the uh, cloak uh, to make it a bit more vibrant in the uh, in the highlighted regions as you can see. Um, I'm getting a little bit on the uh, model itself but that's not a major concern I can always tidy that up by hand and a little bit of off-white um, on the absolute extremities just to uh, finally pick out those highlights and really make them pop now in hindsight I probably would have been better off doing these final highlights by hand um, with the on the, on the off-white but hey, hindsight's a bitch, isn't he? Uh, next is warp block bronze on the trim. Um, this took forever. Uh, anyone who's painted a care sorcerer before um, will know how much trim these uh, bad boys have. It is everywhere, and uh, yeah. So this was absolutely uh, mind-numbing at times because it took for, uh, it took such a long time to get through all the uh, trim work, um, two coats and all that lot uh, on. on making sure that uh, it's a nice even coat um, all across the model. Once I'd got that done, uh, the um, silver went down next, which was Gunmetal by Vallejo. Obviously you can use lead belcher, lead belcher for this. And that was done on all the uh, piping between the armors, uh, armor sections, and, and also around the weapon as well. Uh, just to uh, uh, break everything up. Now as you can see I did make a massive error um, when I first uh, started on this model um, I painted it whilst it was built so learn from me don't do it I was ma messing about with a pose and the model stuck completely and I was like oops when I realized that I uh, couldn't actually take it apart. On, on to all the uh, silver work and it is non oil uh, which obviously anyone who's used it can't you know you can't go wrong with it and it is retributor armor onto the staff so you get that same get that golden sort of color but it's a very very different sort of gold to the uh, trim uh, making it stand out and make it um, they don't get too much of the same color or, uh, without having um, going too far away from the same palette uh, on the model So onto the um, eye lenses, and that is extra opaque, heavy dark green by Vallejo. Uh, it is a game color, uh, and it is a really, really, really um, strong um, shade. Now, obviously, you can use Caliban green for this. It's pretty much the same shade, and uh, the opacity is pretty much the same as well. You just want a good quality um, coverage on there. I've gone around all the. Um, Eyes, eye lenses on his uh, armor as well with the same color. Now I've added some blue shade onto the uh, Retributor armor. Uh, this was a bit of an experiment. I wanted to see how blue would work. Um, not totally convinced uh, by my choice. Um, I eventually went over with uh, a red just to uh, bring it back to sort of a, the correct uh, tone I was hoping for. So onto the trim, it is Rune Lord Brass, um, which goes on what what uh, goes over the top of what what bronze beautifully. Um, I can't uh, recommend this particular um, core trio uh, enough. They really do work well together. You get a lovely, uh, deep, dull uh, metal colour, uh, giving you a really really nice effect. Yeah, and now it's a red tone onto the. Um, Retributor armored staff, 
Uh, this brings it up and brings that blue tone up to a sort of a purpley colour and making it uh, make a much more regal gold colour than sort of a, a dirty oxidised green look what uh, I was getting from the blue. So uh, as an experiment, a bit of a failure, but it was definitely worth a try, uh, something I'll um, know for next time uh, at the very least. So onto the uh, trim again, and it is Agrox Earthshade, um, which pretty much makes everything better anyway. Um, that's going on all the uh, Rune Lord brass sections of the armor, and it just adds that extra depth to the model. Uh, really work, um, brings those uh, the warp lock and the Rune Lord brass together uh, ever so nicely. Now, again, this uh, non always uh, thinned down a lot, uh, slightly. Uh, using the um, flow aid and just add um, make, it makes the uh, paint last longer as much as anything but it does also uh, stop it from drying uh, as fast as it normally would which often helps so on to uh, the first highlight of the uh, trim which is Psychorax uh, bronze again another GW paint I do like this paint a hell of a lot um, you can't use it over anything other than Moon Lord and Warp, uh, Warp Lock um, because it's such a pale colour and it's a very weak um, pigment to it but as a highlight for those it's brilliant. Next is a mixture of Psychorix and Chrome uh, you could use Runefang Steel for this and that just adds another highlight to the model uh, I'm just keeping it towards the uh, leading edges now I'm really picking the corners of the uh, of a model just to really brighten those um, light spots and finally just a touch of uh, chrome itself um, ever so gentle I do apologize for the focus here um, as obviously I was trying to get a, a good angle and trying to be able to paint the model itself as well and it's just uh, on, the, on the extreme points of the uh, models and um, that touch of chrome really brightens up those highlights just make the sauce and make the entire thing uh, just pop uh, really, really nicely. So I've got a thin down Agrax Earthshade now, and that is going over all the trim work again, just to bind those colours together, um, add a touch of brown to where the silvers are, um, and it just uh, makes the colours really uh, blend together nicely. And you get that, so you don't get so quite so stark um, highlight lines. So onto the uh, armor now, and I'm using Wazdaka Red um, for the uh, initial highlights. I'm doing a bit of a clean up here as well. Um, obviously, uh, all over, um, from where I did a bit of overspray with the airbrush uh, onto the armor itself, and uh, the Wazdaka Red just adds a nice touch of a highlight over the top of the the armor, uh, the darker armor from the airbrush. I'm just bringing out those uh, bright sections. Uh, for the um, next layer, uh, for the edge highlights, is now a fit, uh, 65 to 35 mix of Wazdaka and Rakar Flesh. Now, Rakar Flesh um, is a real great uh, highlighting colour for this, but you've got to be very careful because it does come out quite peachy if the uh, uh, mix is a little bit too strong. So uh, just take it, take your time uh, when mixing it so you don't get a mix what you want. The next layer is a 40% Wazdaka to 60% 60, 60 um, Rakarf, and that's going into all the uh, extreme highlights that we've already been bringing out with the other two colours. I'm using a triple uh, zero at this point, uh, Winsor and Newton, uh, for my final highlights. Although I do bring out another layer with the rack off just to make the um, inside edges of the armor plating. Um, really show off, and just to add in, just and just add in a touch, a touch more uh, rack off flesh to the mixture. Um, really, really brings that uh, color up. Um, and if you do it slowly enough, you won't get that peachy look. What you can get from rack off flesh with uh, a red mix. So next it is 
the rack off flesh on its own now, uh, just on the uh, points of her fingers. As you can see, I'm being ever so gentle with this. It's a really thin paint. I'm just trying to uh, keep the leading edges uh, really softened with the rack off without taking them away from being red. I don't want a pink model, um, as obviously he's a Zinchin zombie, not some kind of weirdo Slaneshi geezer. And when you're doing your highlights, just be um, actually aware of where you're putting the highlights. You want the, uh, the model to look like it's reflecting the sun from a single angle, uh, unless you're going for a very specific uh, look like he's under floodlights, etc. So next is uh, Vallejo's Model Air Gold, uh, which is going straight over the top of the um, washed down Rune Lord uh, Retributor armor. Uh, and this is a real dull color. Um, so it really brings down that uh, bright yellow gold from the Retributor. Takes it to something similar to the uh, Rune Lord Brass, but it's still a very, very different color because of the different base layer. Um, just softens it down a bit, making it look a bit less uh, bright. Uh, the next colour is a bright brass, again model air, and this is a again another quite dull uh, metallic. I do like the um, model air metallics, they really do uh, mix well with each other. Uh, the pigment is uh, really really good so you can use it by airbrush without any issues or by hand as well. And you get such a lovely coat with it as well. And of course, <clears throat> no gold will be uh, complete without Agrax Earthshade. So the next is an Agrax Earthshade mix um, to bind the colours together and just to add that depth to the model as well. And finally, a touch of Brax, Brax? Brass and Chrome. Uh, for the final highlights on the model um, obviously waiting for the Agrax to dry and just to, uh, just picks out the um, final uh, touches on the mo um, on the staff and just really bringing out the um, the hot spots making it look really interesting as you can see a touch of chrome on its own but I uh, made the line a little bit thick, so just be, uh, if you're using the thin paint, you can just uh, wipe it off if you need to. Uh, and I switch brushes to a thin one again, and I just start layering those uh, extreme highlights up uh, ever so gently, and you get a real nice effect. So onto the um, eyes, uh, the, top, the thing with gems, is they uh, are highlighted backwards. So as you can see, I'm highlighting the upper uh, light, light, lightwood corner uh, with black, as the the lighter shape, the lighter colours will be coming out of the bottom as uh, gems reflect light in a different way to everything else. So it's uh, when you're doing gems, you're doing it in a reverse pattern. Next is six green, uh, six green uh, by Game Air. Warboss Green is quite adequate for this, uh, for this colour. Um, I just happen to like this particular, uh, this particular colour. Is it's just a nice sort of change from uh, the caliber, the heavy dark green. And I, as you can see, I'm just doing it. All the bottom set, bottom corners of all the, uh, all the gems are used in, in the lighter green. The next is Moot Green by GW, which is a very very vibrant green. So. Uh, you don't need a lot of it, and what you do need to do is, uh, when you've uh, placed it down, you need to uh, wash it down afterwards because it does stand out a hell of a lot. You want the um, colours to all blend together, um, so just be uh, aware how bright this particular colour is. A bit of BL tan um, wash on the um, on all the uh, lenses, and just brings all those uh, colours together. It also, uh, if you do it over the entire entirety of the lens, it adds a subtle green tone to the uh, black corners, so even the the darkest sections are slightly um, green, and just uh, brings all the uh, effects together. So the next is ivory. Um, 
you could use a white I uh, as you know I tend to steer away from white uh, where possible as um, off whites are often better give you a bit more breathing room and what you want is a tiny dot at the top uh, lead at the leading corner and sort of a line where the lights diffuse out the bottom uh, for the um, for the lower corners as if the uh, lights are uh, being diffused so uh, once I've got that um, all done as you can see I did a little bit more work on the cloak I'm still not happy with that uh, but it had a oil wash and uh, all the uh, bells and whistles done it also diffused some of the uh, light across the uh, eyes as well to a bit of uh, on source lighting by hand so got a couple of thank yous to make uh, obviously uh, if you want to get any of the um, stuff we've used uh, for your own personal collections check out the outpost um, in Sheffield we've got a, a link below and big thank yous to our Patreons Joe Spearpoint, Rob Paints Models, Warren Brunsden and Ludwig Hofbauer you are awesome and uh, thank you for uh, your Patreon support if you want to uh, see more of our videos uh, check us out on Facebook hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends every little helps and we will catch you in the next one guys take care and have a good day bye bye